These are the five steps to get to $30,000 a month in your cleaning business. This is a completely achievable goal within 12 months, I would say. And in this video, I'm gonna take you through the exact step-by-step -step process I would go through if I was starting from scratch again. So first of all, $30,000 a month, let's break that down. Um, if we are running a house cleaning business and we are focused on recurring clients, let's make the assumption that a typical recurring client asks us to clean their home twice a month, so a bi-weekly service. Each cleaning is around $150. So therefore, over a month, two cleans a month would bring us $300 in revenue for each client. So what that means is that if we want to generate $30,000 a month, we need to have 100 bi-weekly clients. So if we have a cleaner within our company and they are available full time, let's make the assumption that they have two available slots to clean every day, you know, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. So every week, if they're working five days a week, they would have 10 slots. So that means over the course of two weeks, there are potentially 20 available slots. So one cleaner has space for 20 bi-weekly clients in that case. So th this means we need to have five full-time cleaners on our books to have 100 bi-weekly slots available. And we know that if we have 100 bi-weekly clients paying $300 a month, that is then how we hit $30,000 a month. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through the five key steps you need to go from to, to get to that level. So let's jump straight into it. First of all, I often get asked, you know, do we recruit cleaners first or do we find clients first? And the way that I advise people to do it is to set up your marketing campaigns to begin with, then recruit your first cleaner, then turn on your marketing channel. Because often there is a time lag uh, between setting up and being able to launch your marketing channel. So if you can get that set up at the beginning, recruit your cleaner, give them a few days to onboard and then turn on your marketing channel. That means that the time from recruiting your first cleaner to getting those first book jobs is gonna be that much shorter. Point one is to set up your paid marketing channels. What do I mean by this? So as many of you know, uh, on, on my channel, I'm a big believer in Google marketing. I think that is the best place to focus and to spend your time and money because ultimately that is where people go to find cleaning businesses. So there's a couple of steps that we need to take in terms of getting set up with our Google paid marketing. So the first thing we need to do when we set up a new business, uh, and if you, you haven't already done so, is to set up a Google business profile. And this is effectively a little social profile that Google allows you to set up. Uh, once you have set that up, you can add photos, you can add videos, you can add descriptions about what you do, you can post weekly, and importantly, it also has your Google ratings uh, as well. And if you typed in you know, cleaning services you know, in my area into Google, you would probably see in the middle of the page, there's this map section. And those maps listings are essentially uh, a list of a few cleaning companies, Google business profiles. So that's one of the first things we need to do at the beginning, get set up. Google will send you uh, something through the mail and you'll need to you know, uh, verify your, your profile. And then what's important is you wanna try and get those first five reviews uh, under your belt. And you need to get this set up to set up the next step, which is your Google LSA or Google local service ads um, profile. So if you don't already have clients at the beginning, but you're looking to start up, the best way to do this is just to clean for some of your friends and family. Maybe you do a free cleaning for them, or maybe you do a discounted cleaning and get them to leave a review. And that should hopefully get your first five reviews. Once you have your Google business profile active, and once you have those first five profiles active, you can then, then set up your Google local service ads uh, profile. So this does take a couple of weeks to, to get approved generally, and this is why I tend to advise people to get this all set up before you start recruiting your first cleaners. They'll often ask you to go through a background check. Uh, they'll ask you to submit some company documents, some insurance documents, and it takes you know, a, a little bit of time for them to get back and to, to approve your profile. But once you've been approved, you can then turn on or turn off your LSA uh, campaign and it's pretty instantaneous. 
But as I said, there is that delay at the beginning, which is why you want to get your, your Google business profile and your Google local service ads profiles and campaigns set up before you recruit your first cleaner. So that is the Google part of, side of things of paid marketing. The other area that I tell people to, to try at the beginning are these paper lead sites. So Bark and Thumbtack uh, are the two that I would suggest. The way that these two websites work is that essentially you can sign up as, uh, as a supplier on these websites and you can essentially buy clients' contact details because what you'll see is that when you log into those uh, websites, you can say, okay, I'm a cleaning business based in this part of Florida. I'm interested in potential house cleaning clients. And what you will see when you log in is that a feed of new potential clients are coming in. So people who are looking for cleaning services in your area will submit an inquiry and then you, you know, you as one of the suppliers on that platform can see them pop up. You often get them emailed to you. If you log in, you can see them come through uh, in real time. And then what you can do is if you come across a lead that you think is particularly interesting, you know, as I said, let's say it's a, a recurring client in your particular location, which would be an ideal uh, client, then you can choose to buy that lead. You can use your credits for a certain dollar amount. And then what Bark or Thumbtack do is then they will then you know, share with you that client's contact details. You can then follow up with a client and obviously try to close that client. So Bark and Thumbtack work in a very similar way. Um, they are you know, paperly pay-as-you-go sites. There are other sites out there like Angie that operate a similar model, but they require you to sign up for a multi-month, six, 12-month you know, contract. Uh, which I think is probably not a good idea to do when you're, you're at the beginning. Far better to go for a pay-as-you-go uh, option like Bark or Thumbtack and that al allows you to come and go and use it as much or as little as you want without being locked into a financial contract. So Bark and Thumbtack, again, you know, it takes a few minutes to set up your profiles on both those websites, you know, fill out your profile, add photos, add the description, uh, of what you do so you've got a nice profile and the way that these platforms work is that you will buy the the credit but that contact detail the contact details of that client can also get sold to other uh, suppliers on the platform as well so you know essentially what you'll find is that you will, that a potential client will get probably contacted by multiple cleaning companies and I talk about on other videos, the best way to try and close these clients. You know, it's really about the speed of response. You wanna be uh, getting back to new clients very, very quickly. You wanna be getting them on the phone rather than messaging them because phone is a much more powerful tool. You can answer um, that client's questions, build rapport, build trust, and ultimately the chances of you closing that lead to a potential or to a booked client is gonna be far higher than if you're engaging in a back and forth uh, over messages. So Bark and Thumbtack would be the other areas to, to set up uh, before you hire your first cleaner. So point one is setting up your paid marketing channels. So once we have that in place, we then move to stage two, which is recruiting um, your first client. And again, the way that I think is the website that is the best for, in my view to recruit cleaners is indeed.com. The way I see Indeed is very much like Google. You know, if you're looking for potential clients, you need to be advertising on Google. If you're recruiting cleaners, you need to be uh, advertising for cleaners on indeed.com. So the way that Indeed works is that it's, I think it's probably the, the world's biggest recruitment website. And you know, you as an advertiser for staff can say, okay, I'm looking for cleaners, house cleaners in this particular location. You can then create an advert and uh, indeed will charge you a uh, cost per click every time your ad is clicked. Obviously, you know, once someone clicks on, on their ad, on your ad, then there needs to be a next step, usually to book in with a telephone interview. And then obviously out of the set number of those interviews, we would then uh, get a hired cleaner uh, off the back of that. Indeed ads, there's a couple of things that uh, I suggest uh, in terms of making sure that your ads are as effective as possible because you do have an ability to, to create whatever advert you want, whatever titles, whatever descriptions, whatever call to action. But what I tend to tell people is don't reinvent the wheel. Have a look 
in your area of the big franchises or some bigger cleaning companies that you're aware of and see what ads that they create. Um, obviously don't copy paste exactly what they do, but if they're all using a similar format, it makes sense to use that same format as well. And, you know, generally we want our ad title to be very, very clear, make it very clear at the top of the, the job ad, you know, what the pay is, the locations covered, the typical hours, those are the key pertinent parts of a job ad. You know, if a, a potential job seeker is trying to trawl through your really, really long job ad to find this information, they're simply not going to get there. They're not going to apply and you're going to you get a, a, you know, a, a far lower return and in investment for your, uh, for your adverts. So use bullet points, split out the text, don't have too long an e a job ad and have a clear call to action. So the act, clear to call to action would be, you know, click the apply button. Uh, or message us or go to this web link, you know, make it very clear what the next step uh, needs to be. So once that potential job candidate has decided, okay, I'm going to take the next step. I'm interested in what these guys do. You know, really the next step for me is that, you know, you want to, uh, the call to action should be to message you, to, to book in a, a telephone interview. And at this stage, I then use a software called Calendly. Calendly is a self-scheduling calendar software effectively. So what you can do is that you can create a calendar. You can say, okay, I'm available to take calls, you know, 2 p.m. till 6 p.m. Monday, Monday through Friday. And um, if I share that calendar link, people can then go in and book specific time slots within the calendar for a telephone interview. And why this is great and why it saves so much time is that without this, you know, you'd be going back and forth with uh, job candidates saying, oh, can you do three till four on Friday? Or no, I can't do, can you do this time? Get in their phone number. Calendly within that, um, that link allows, you know, us to really shortcut a lot of that back and forth and it captures the you know, job candidates uh, details um, as well. So get them to use Calendly to book in a uh, interview with you. The next stage is then to get them to call you, not you to call them, because you know, you'll find that many people, you know, if you are calling candidates at certain times, they're not gonna be picking up the phone. So every single time you dial, but don't get a, an answer, that is wasted time for you. So put the onus on the candidate, get them to call you. In that telephone interview, you can, you know, uh, basically keep it relatively short and sweet. One of the overriding themes within recruitment is that most people that you interview aren't going to be suitable for your position. It really is a volume game. You need to interview a lot of people to to find these diamonds. Um, you know, in my cleaning business, we you know recruit less than one percent. So for every hundred candidates, we'll only recruit one uh, cleaner. So we need to go through the volume, get through volume, and then try to identify these really good candidates. So we keep that, this telephone interview phase relatively brief. We'll go through the uh, the job spec. If there's any hesitation or anything that is a red flag during that initial call, then we would keep the, keep the call short and sweet. You know, for us, it's 10, 15 minutes. But if we like what we're hearing, we find out a bit more about their experience, the next stage would then be to interview them uh, over Zoom. And again, we would send them a Calendly link to their email, get them to, to self-schedule a Zoom in. And the reason why we, we have this next um, phase is that a Zoom interview allows us to see how that client is face to face. You know, with running a house cleaning business, there it needs to be a rapport with the client. Cleaners are going into the client's uh, property. So we need to make sure that they have a nice manner. We're testing for things like English language. We're testing, we're trying to figure out if, you know, this person seems comfortable having a face to face -to conversation. But also what you'll find is that many people who you may interview during that first telephone interview don't show up for the second one. So this is just another way to weed out unsuitable candidates um, through the process. So the final thing to say about, you know, recruitment of your cleaners is that, you know, increasingly recruiting for softer skills rather than experience. Uh, I think is more and more important because, you know, the softer skills might be, you know, uh, do people have a nice uh, manner on the phone? Do they always turn up on time? Do they build a good rapport? You know, I would always take those facets, those characteristics ahead of someone who is much, much more experienced 
obviously we need experienced uh, cleaners because we're running or using 1099 contractors but don't neglect these soft skills these are you know when we're on the interview we want to be testing both of these uh, both of these skills skill sets so once we have recruitment set up our ads running we recruit our first cleaner then we switch back to marketing you know once we've onboarded that that cleaner we go to step three that is to turn on our paid marketing channels so turn on your google local service ads and then your bark and thumbtack you can turn those on and start seeing those feeds coming in and start buying those leads the idea is that we want to start getting leads we want to start getting book clients so we can book those clients in with the cleaner that we have just uh, contacted get lsa up and running get your bark and thumbtack up and running and then there's a couple of other things that we can do and this is more on the the free marketing side is that we can go into some of the local uh, mums and dads facebook groups you know we can search for people looking for cleaning we can uh, we can see if someone posts and looking for a re recommended cleaner we want to go in and respond to those people and you can do this by you know, logging in every day and just doing a keyword search within the, those particular mums and, and dads groups. As you know, as, as a parent myself, I know that you know you, your parents and families need lots and lots of help with cleaning and things like that. So these Facebook groups can be a really, really great place to find potential clients um, as well. But you know, make sure that you you're not too overly selling and you're not posting every day you'll get kicked out of the groups doing that. So you want to keep an eye on when people post, when they post, you can then chime in and say, you know, we, we, we work uh, with families in the area and you'll pick up some clients, pick up some inquiries um, from, that, uh, from that side as well. The, the second area that I talked about on other videos on my channel uh, is developing partnerships with complementary service companies. What do I mean by this? So, uh, you know, we are running a house cleaning business, but within the cleaning niche, there are lots and lots of different areas uh, and, and areas that people focus on so let's say we offer a house cleaning service but we don't do carpet cleaning or we don't do window cleaning a potential partner would be to then contact carpet cleaners and window cleaners in your area and see if they would be interested in some sort of referral uh, agreement you know it's, it's probably very likely that many of their clients will be interested in house cleaning businesses or maybe they have a house cleaning company uh, that they use and maybe they're not happy so these companies will have a strong overlap with your potential client base the way that you should set up a referral agreement is is basically to say you know for every client that is referred uh, to your business from them you'll pay them an x x dollar amount for each referral and you can do this in a very simple way using a coupon code so you know let's say David's window cleaning services agrees to have some sort of referral um, arrangement with you. Uh, you get them to send a, uh, an email to their list or maybe when some of their clients are asking for house cleaning company recommendations, he could then use a particular coupon code. You know, you know, it could be David 20 or house cleaning 20. And if that client then books with your house cleaning business, you can then track it each time a uh, booking comes from them and you can just add up all the uh, referrals over the month and then just pay them a dollar amount and you can also do it as a way to introduce like a, a discount code for that new client sort of persuade them to try using you as well so maybe you give 10 or 20 percent off their first cleaning as well so these partnerships can be a really really effective thing to, to do they don't get formed overnight it does take time to develop and to um, to evolve once you've got your business up and running, once you've got cleaners in your, in your calendar and, and you have availability, then look to start building out these partnerships um, as well. So by now, you should hopefully have cleaners available, uh, marketing turned on, bookings getting uh, in, the, in the calendar and should hopefully start getting some revenue coming in, in through, the, uh, through the doors. So point four is then how to scale with quality. Setting up a house cleaning business, I think nine times out of 10, the way to do it is to use 1099 contractors, self-employed cleaners. So, you know, this gives you flexibility in your workforce as opposed to running with W2 employees. But there is often the, the main question about how do you control quality? Because with 1099s, we can't train them. So in my business, what we, what we do is that we use client ratings as our primary 
metric for, for quality of service. So after every cleaning, we would send our client a um, feedback email or a feedback text uh, asking them to rate the, the clean on a scale from you know, zero stars to five stars. And we set a barrier or a minimum of 90% of client satisfaction. So that means that on average, our, client, uh, our cleaners need to be operating at a four and a half star out of five level to continue to, to, uh, to get new booked clients uh, with us. So if it's four star, we stop sending them new, uh, new bookings. If they're at 4.6 or 4.7, then they continue to get a new booking. So what this uh, allows us to do is it allows us to, to focus on the top performers, the top performers who are getting the best ratings, and that allows us to maximize the quality of our service because quality is super important. There, you know, wherever you are based in the country, there'll be lots and lots of cleaning companies but maintaining a high quality of service is really the way um, that you're going to uh, differentiate. So if we are setting this high minimum, we need to make sure that if people, you know, cleaners drop below that level and they're no longer available to take on new cleaners, we need to make sure our recruitment channels are really, really working, working well and generating a steady stream of new joiners so we can swap out poor performers with, with new performers who hopefully can hit that four and a half star out of five level. So that is the primary way that we maintain and monitor the quality in our business. Because if you've got a poor quality service, you're really, really gonna struggle to scale because your recurring clients will eventually churn off because of the quality uh, issues. By now you're scaling and you know, you're know generating revenue. Point five is then setting up SEO. SEO is search engine optimization. And this is really what is gonna take your business to the next level. This is really, you know, when we talk about Google marketing, we have Google local services ads and Google ads running. The Google, uh, the Google SEO it refers to the, you know, ranking high in your, in the map section with your Google business profile, and then high in the results uh, below the maps, what's called the organic uh, rankings uh, as well. So. When you get to probably around $10,000 a month, this is when you really want to get start getting serious with your, uh, with your SEO. You know, you'll have a Google business profile by now. You'll probably have some bookings, some clients, some reviews, and that will definitely help to get you started. But really to take yourself to the next level, you need a solid SEO strategy and plan. This consists of, you know, optimizing both your website for things like the titles and the text and the page speed and all those sorts of things and then the off-site work which can you know that consists of citation building backlink building all that type of stuff that stuff doesn't come accidentally you need to know exactly what you're doing so point five is introducing seo to the plan and what you'll find is that once you have seo tuned in your your lead volume is going to really jump up and you're going to blast through thirty thousand hit 50,000 and then get up to those seven figure level. So in this next video, I'm going to talk a bit, a bit, bit more about SEO. I'm going to do an introduction to SEO for cleaning businesses. Um, and this will really help to increase the knowledge of what a highly effective SEO strategy looks like. So I'll see you on the next one.